morning. It's Friday, December 16th. Today we're going to pull all the tail parts out of the molds. Funny thing is, uh, I had to bring in those molds into the house, put them in the kitchen table to uh, cure because it's too cold outside in the shop. <laughs> then I was looking at it and thought, wow, these look like starship trooper insects. Anyhow, let's get started. Good morning all. It's a balmy 55 degrees here in the shop and we're gonna crack open all these molds. So let's get on with it. So anyhow, my uh, trusty Arbor Freight um, chisels here. Hopefully, we're going to have some luck. The biggest thing about when you're mold making, you know, I've spent what, uh, let's see, looking at my board here, I've been doing the time. I've spent around 12 hours total time from prepping these molds for all the tail section to this point. So that's laying it all up applying the primers, wax, and so forth. And uh, that's the hard part. The most fun oh, is to uh, do this and hope that you've got some success. So here we go. We either smile or we cry tonight, one or the other. Okay, so far, this uh, bottom section looks fantastic. So, the little trick here is give the molds a twist, you hear the crack, and hopefully, a little bend releases them, and you gently just come along and they pop right out. And guess what? For once, this week we have perfection it's going to still be a uh, you know it's, it's only been since yesterday so that's what about 24 hours i guess since we laid these up so they're going to feel just slightly rubbery for another couple of days and then they'll uh, they'll start to really get stiff but these are pretty good there's no wallow this is nice and tight here little flashing take that off no problem so, let's get on with it. The next is the rudder. So if I can stop dropping my damn tools all over the place, I might get some work. So we'll just go around and ease it gently. When you hear those cracking, that's usually a good sign. <laughs> but when I'm removing these molds, this side is deep, which is the leading edge. The trailing edge is the better one to actually lift up because this has less of a depth to it. And hopefully, we'll just come forward. There we go. Ooh, looks good so far, folks. All right, a little twist. All right, I think the flashing's uh, sticking to all this stuff. So we'll get our trusty uh, flashing remover, custom built tool, well, well sharpened at least. <laughs> so uh, applying the PVA, i.e. mold release agent, around the perimeter, see how it just comes off real easy? Now if you've got super smooth uh, parting planes down here, which in this case I actually really don't, uh, just waxing usually works, but I always like to uh, 
live dangerously. See, these don't flex as easy because there's no internal structure to stiffen them up. So, what we have to do in this case is just get your lip under there, come down gently, just to break. Come on, baby. There we go. Like I say, these are fairly deep. See, these are really deep in here, so they can get stuck. And it looks like we have a perfect everything. Well, we just missed a little bit here. But a little CA in there and Bob's your uncle, no problem. These are really nice, nice and stiff. So, so far, 10 out of 10. Let's see how we do. Uh, let's do the big bad boy. This is the one which may or may not give us some trouble. And this is the rudder. And there's some real deep cavities where the hinges are on this guy. Plus it's got a really bulbous end though, which is quite thick. So here we go. One thing uh, somebody asked me actually in the comments was, you know, what thickness and how much uh, layers of cloth and resin and so forth do I use to build the molds? Well, when I first started out, I used to build the molds and they were, you know, whatever, quarter inch thick and all this stuff and used a gallon of resin to make, you know, a spinner, that kind of thing. And then uh, they were so stiff that you couldn't flex them or anything. So I started to go a little thinner at the time. So now my maximum mold thickness is probably an eighth of an inch or, uh, you know, three thirty seconds. And it's stiff enough to uh, keep the form, especially when you leave the plugs in them for storage, which I always do. Once these have been removed and cleaned, I'll put the original mold plug back in, tape or uh, lock them up in some way, depending on whether they've got screws in them or not, and then I'll uh, just leave them stored. And they never bend that way. But you see how they're flexible enough that I can just about get some action here. So I think the flashing's capturing it. Maybe not. We'll soon find out. So far, we're really uh, doing good. So I hope top looks really good. So I hope the bottom looks uh, equally. Now let's see. There was a way of getting this out. And I think it was from the top here, and then easing it around bit by bit we've got this real uh, deep spot here <clears throat> so we're gonna have a little fight with this guy I think just get in there maybe <clears throat> come on baby there we go the crack so I just have to somehow get into this section here like this and ease it out there we go it's funny how it's stuck out as hell and then all of a sudden pop just falls out so I guess that's part of the fun or the terror of making money but, uh, oh geez, almost perfect. 
just a tiny little void here where oh well it's not a void actually uh it's certainly glued all down here but um let's see but it's glued it's just somehow didn't fill it properly oh well oh that is a little void that that must have been where it was pinched in the mold just now but so far again we're doing good so we got the last elevator and uh, if we come out like we did with these last few So this one may or may not come out easy. There we go. Again, this looks pretty good. Off with the flushing. See, this is uh, where these get stuck. See, I've got a little drippage inside there. Now, I did soak this in PVA for the control rod. But, inevitably... You have no control over where stuff seeps. So, we'll just do our best. And I will have to just lightly sand this trailing gauge because it's very shallow there, so. I think this is Gonna be a problem. I'll start from this end. There we go. Jeez, oh, I would drop these things. Okay, moving along. Come on, baby. Don't do that. Whoops. Yeah, it's definitely stuck in this uh, end here, so let's try working our way down. Now, I don't like shoving the chisels in like I had to do here, because it can sometimes scratch the primer. Oh, there we go. That was easy. Let's take a look at this guy. like a perfect seal except for just this little crack here and uh, maybe I didn't give enough time when I had the mold on end to run the resin through or the goop but again no problem you can either put a little goop in there five minute epoxy whatever you like and uh, it fixes it so great, we've done good. All right, now I'll just do a quick lesson in uh, how we get rid of flashing. And it's just basically like that. No big deal, no drama. Just get something semi sharp. I don't like to use super sharp because, uh, well, I should put it the right way around. It is the right way around. There we go. And you just run it down, just uh, gently, bently, take it all off. Now, I believe Roger, when he does his, tints the uh, goop. So, you know, if I guess if, uh, if it was Roger, he'd probably be doing it with a, a grey colour like this, let's say, and he'd tint his goop to uh, match so when it goes to his customer everything looks like it's all one color but I pretty much paint all my stuff and uh, don't have that problem but you can see how easy it is it's very thin I mean you can pretty much tear it off So 
was that a minute to clean that one anyhow those all need doing so let's get on to the uh canopy this will just slide right out because i did trim it and ease it a little One canopy frame. Oh, damn it. Got a void down here. Funny, the places where it shouldn't have a void gets a void. That's weird. And then we got a little chip out there where it got stuck in the mold. These details have uh, come out nice. All the rivets have come out nice. So anyhow, this is an easy fix, a little bit of surface filler. Oh, it's all down this edge. Hmm, oh well. That gets fixed real easy. Actually, that doesn't feel too strong though. So I think what I'll do, yeah, looks like I missed the second layer of six ounce cloth. Oh, in fact, I missed six ounce cloth altogether on this. That's why it's so flimsy though. You see, this is kind of stiff and once the frame's on, it's perfectly uh, fine, especially when the glass goes in because the glass is all one. So what I'll do is I'll pop this back in the mold, tape these, and then just put a couple of layers of six ounce in and it won't be a problem. These have uh, come out good. So these are what we took out the other day. I think I filmed them. And then uh, we'll take all the paper off, clean all the molds. Won't bother waxing them this time, but I'll uh, double wax them the next time and we should have no problems. Anyhow, that is the uh, end of all the layups for the Tucano. Obviously, I'm just going to show you uh, closing up and uh, closing up the mold with the uh, plugs and how I store my stuff. Number one thing is uh, go wash the molds. I use uh, just very, very lukewarm water and uh, in my case, Dawn soap. And I wash the PVA off with a sponge. It's, it only takes a few uh, seconds and then make sure it's uh, very dry. If you don't do that, when you put in the uh, plug-in, then uh, it can uh, get stuck in the mold over time. And that's happened to me when I was lazy or tired and uh, I didn't uh, clean them and uh, the parts stuck in. I mean, that is no big deal, but it just can sometimes damage your paint or whatever. Anyhow, this is the way I store them. You notice I just put the elevator plug, not the part I just formed, just the plug, back in the mold and uh, dried it, washed it, etc. And uh, it's good to go. Now, this is a, uh, I'm going to call it a pro tip. <laughs> but here in, in this mold, it looks like uh, I've got a couple of rivets or screws, depending on what it is, the very tiny things what didn't come out. Now, a lot of people will just leave that. Well, don't. you got to take everything out. Because if you leave anything into the mold, even as small as a little tiny flush rivet, it will not allow the original plug to sit correctly. And I know it just sounds crazy because it's probably just, you know, a few thousandths of an inch or whatever. But I have had that problem where uh, it's, it's caused a little bit of a twist in the mold when it's been stored for a long time. So anyhow, that's my pro tip. Just don't be lazy. Clean up the molds. Coming and, next uh, is uh, the assembly of the tail and uh, begin putting the fuse together.